Welcome to the teaching and preaching ministry of Pastor Petrock. God's word is truly quick, alive and powerful. God does everything he does with, via and through his word. Get ready for your life to be shaped and transformed. Your destiny to be modeled, even as you listen to God's word from the lips of his anointed servants. Just one word from God can change your entire life forever. Be blessed as you listen. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. You're my God and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh, you're my king and your name is Yahweh, your name is Yahweh, Yahweh, you're my friend and your name is Yahweh, your name is Yahweh. Spirit of the living God, help us this morning. I pray that you grant unto us wisdom, grant unto us revelation in the name of Jesus. Please listen very carefully to what I want to teach. Just a few minutes, we have the miracle service in the evening. You can come prepared. I trust that the Lord will do great and mighty things. But just a few minutes to encourage our hearts. Second Chronicles chapter 27 and verse 6. I just want to touch a bit this morning on the power of preparation. The power of preparation. Second Chronicles chapter 27 and verse 6. The Bible talks about a strange man called Jotham. And I just want us to learn a lesson this morning. Let me open it from here. Second Chronicles chapter Is it projected? Okay. To one of the benefits of um, media devices, it makes searching for scripture very easy. Read with me, it's projected if you can find. One, two, read. So Jotham became mighty. Why? Because he prepared his way. Not just because the Lord helped him. Not just because he wanted to be mighty. The Bible says the man Jotham became mighty because he took out time to prepare his way before the Lord. One of the tragedies that I have seen and I believe that Pastor and many other people have seen is the speed with which people rush into things that they believe their lives depend on. Now, God is a God of speed agreed god is a god that can accelerate people's results scattered across scripture we see men and women who stepped into unusual dimensions overnight joseph became a prime minister in 24 hours are we together but then one of the and i think it's becoming an error that we need to pay attention to is not sustaining the same power to be vetted and accredited by God before allowing ourselves to show up at the scene of life. You see, the quality of your delivery is dependent on your preparation. Are we together now? Yes. So, in as much as we want to do so much, in as much as we want to achieve so much, it is important for us to understand this very simple subject that your success and the level of your might and your result in this kingdom is not just dependent on how fast you run, 
but how prepared you are. Are we together now? The Bible talks about Jesus, pastor. The Bible says at age 12, when his colleagues, teenagers, were running around, this gentleman, although the living word, the very living logos, was at the temple asking questions, it would be costly for him to ask a question in front of a blind man. And so he was asking it, preparing all the answers. He knew that Satan was somewhere in the scene, and so he kept preparing himself. And theologically speaking, for 18 years, we don't hear anything about Jesus again. From age 12, there was 18 years of total silence. It's still a debate till today, even theologically. Where did he go to? The Son of God, your Son of God. From age 12, the next time we hear anything about Jesus is that John is baptizing. And this stranger, after 18 years, shows up and he says, this is the Lamb of God. Not this is Jesus. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And all of a sudden, John baptizes Jesus. He's driven by the Spirit to the wilderness. And here Satan comes. And Jesus, it is written. It is written. It is written. And the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. And his fame went abroad. You will think it was just because he was baptized. What happened to the 18 years of silence? We look at the life of Moses and we see that he was a great man, greatly used by God. Are we together now? But the Bible lets us know that for 40 years, how many years? 40 years, he was at the backside of the mountain tending Jethro. His father-in-law's ship. When he had that encounter. You know, we live in a generation where we have mastered the art of disregarding the time factor in greatness. We celebrate results because, you see, mastery always comes with acceleration. When you watch someone minister, when you watch the power of God move, when you watch the sick get healed. And it is very dangerous to focus your attention just on the results. The process is the reason why the result remains. And we must sustain the ability to not only admire men's finished product, but to be able to make a determination. There are certain dimensions in the spirit that cannot be imparted. It's a track record. Are we together now? It's a track record. Once upon a time, David was in the cave of Adulam. The one who would become king. Several things were happening to him at that cave. But then we see that this man is enjoying the royalty of the throne and we admire him. And wish that we wake up overnight and sit on the throne. Now, is the reason why we love prophecy so much. Because I believe in the prophetic, I walk in it. But we hope that prophecy, you see, the truths of scripture do not replace themselves. They complement themselves. Just because you are a prayer warrior does not exempt you from activating seed time and harvest. Your prayer life will not supplement for that. Is that correct? Just because you are giving and receiving does not mean it will replace the place of fasting and prayer and all of that. The truths of scripture build upon themselves. So I can look at your life and know that there is a gap in understanding in an area. Just because you excel in an area does not necessitate... Um, you being listened to in another area. Every area must be vetted independently. I must see the attention you gave God in your finances. Just because you got a guy out of wheelchair does not mean I trust your information in an area. Because the, the kingdom of God is made up of systems. And every system has an operation. And you must pay the price to understand. Greatness happens to intense preparation. The Bible says there is no man who intending to build a house would first sit down. Now that course must be a serious one. You want to build. Building requires action. But God says to move forward, go back and sit down. This is God recommending how to build well. That you want to build a house and the first thing to do is to sit down and count the cost. What is the cost? Whether or not you have what it takes to finish. Not to start to finish 
because if you turn aside in the day of battle you have strength but your strength is small remember the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins both of them had oil but a few had extra oil for the moments of pain and strength the wisdom, they were all virgins the difference was that others went to buy it was available but others were carried about uh, carried around by the fact that they had a little oil and others went the extra mile to get some more our generation of people we must pay attention to the power and the sacrifice of preparation it is good to admire people it's good to admire the anointing it's good to wish but mesmerizing and admiring will not get it to us we must have a determination in our heart that under God whatever price it will take I will pay that price no matter how long when you hurry in life you will see where your knowledge stopped you will know I have exhausted my knowledge and it is dangerous when people start following you while you are still in ignorance because when you stop you will force them to stop and then pride usually will take over and you will have to fabricate a theology to explain why you are not moving forward this is why you see people rise faster and get to certain heights they don't backslide but they never go higher they peg themselves they define their limitations are we together now the power of preparation so Dothan became great because he prepared his way before the Lord knowing what God has called you to do is not enough brothers and sisters as important as that is knowing what God has called you to do is not enough knowing your place in life and destiny is not enough people talk a lot about purpose it's true but purpose is not enough having a dream and having a vision is not enough just because you are aware of what to do does not mean it will be done are we together now you must know what it will take to deliver the results you expect I am I am obsessed with manifestation not of the power it is frustrating to dream dreams and have visions and to wish and to make boastful statements the Bible says hope deferred can make the heart weary the end of faith is a manifestation the word became flesh it was prophesied for many years but one day it became flesh and then the Bible says that it was manifest among us and we beheld the glory You must know what it takes to actualize every desire that you have otherwise it will never come to pass your pastor we are celebrating this dear man of God today not just because he was sent to me now are we together but because he paid the price I had um, the opportunity to have been with him at the foundational periods of this ministry and I can tell you firsthand some of the sacrifices that went through months of prayer understanding piecing together the information and the truths that will take to bring the level of dominion that we now enjoy not everything in the kingdom is a gift you've heard me say it there are things that are rewards if everything is a gift what then is the reward of obedience are we together now this morning service is a call not just to celebrate a man but that you be inspired not just by his results but the sacrifices behind it are we together now yes this appreciation service i really believe would have um, been greatly would achieve its aim if on one side we celebrate pastor but that you walk out of this place today with a determination and say look for many years i've written all kinds of visions i have volumes of books there are people their whole lives are full of writing prophecies 
God said this, just watch and see. And they keep growing old, just watch and see. I tell you, just watch and see. Paul said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy. You do something about them to make them happen. And that something is preparation. You can have all the dream in the realm of the spirit. It will stop there. There is a system of translating those realities to find expression. Every man you see today that you admire, that inspires your life, went through this route. There is a relationship between the cross and the throne. There is a relationship between the cross and the throne. I know this may not be comfortable for all of us. The way to the cross, the throne, is the cross. There is a relationship between Goliath and the throne. There is a relationship between the wilderness and the palace. There is a relationship between Adulam and the place of greatness. There is a relationship between Pharaoh's presence and the prison. Do not let death scare you. The word death must not be used in a negative sense. The same place resurrection happens is where death happens. They all are in the same place. There is a relationship between death and glory. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, please listen to me. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and does what? There is no beauty in death. There is no packaging in death. It doesn't matter the size of the seed, it will still die. But from that death, something begins to happen. All of a sudden, you look at a bare ground. And for days you don't see anything. Sometimes weeks. And then something begins to shoot up. Something has happened. A connection between that seed and the earth. And it begins to spring forth and rise. This is how men grow in this kingdom. If you are ashamed of pain. If you are ashamed of embarrassment. If you are ashamed of your reputation. Forget about greatness. There is a real price. The crown will not only be golden. It is the crown on the throne that is golden. The crown is a crown of thorn while you are going to the cross. The mockery of men, their misunderstanding. You will see yourself learn the principles of the kingdom like a toddler walking. They will walk today and fail you tomorrow. Yet God still says continue. He will even talk about it. The power of preparation. Is God helping us? Because many of us may be in that phase now. And if you don't learn this, you will interrupt your growth process by comparing your results with others and thinking you are doing something wrong. Let it continue. If you do not understand the dealings of God, Lord, why do I have such a voice and no one has invited me? I will coordinate myself and try to route another route to the throne. You will not get there. There is only one way. You see, this way to the throne, you don't go in groups. No matter who you are, there is a divergence by the very finger of God. You can start as friends, fellow pastors, fellow members, but you get to a point where it's a lonely path. There are times in your life where you don't even know whether your prayers are answered or not. Mm. There are times in your life when your gift does not even bless you. And while you are about to doubt it, God sends a man and you use it on him to bless him. Then he returns back to let you know he's aware of what he's doing. Is my God and his name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh, Yahweh. You're my God, and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh, Yahweh. <laughs> Pastor, I remember years ago when I would go to minister. I remember one time. It was rainy, no protocol, no nothing. I went there to the church, and when I got there, they didn't even know I was the one who was invited. The rain had drenched me, prayed and fasted, dry fast three days. Yeah. 
was ready to go and bless the people of God in the rain. I stood in front of the church there. They asked me to wait there. And they had to shift some people to prepare a seat. You see that? And then they were acting drama. They were laughing. They were doing a lot of things. And I came in that rain. And when I was about to collect the mic, they quickly whispered that, sorry, time has gone. I have 15 minutes. I should just charge and give an exhaustion. And immediately I finished, the, the man just dipped his hand in his pocket as though he was bribing me. He said, uh, I should just take a bike. Don't you think, when you see certain levels of glory, you will think people just jump processes. Nobody jumps a process. It's just that the glory was designed to so clean you, there will be no trace of the cross. But there is a reason why the sky is still in the hands of Jesus. That sky, don't rush seasons. You will miss what you are running away from today. Because it will be the only restriction, the level of glory that comes upon you will require you looking at the scar to still remain. There is a level people will honor you. You get to a point where no man can rebuke you because of the level of grace and honor. Then God takes you to the secret place and says, remember the scar. I left that scar so that when you are about to go out of your orbit spiritually, I bring you back. Remember the scar. The glory of the throne can be so much if there is no scar. A scar is a blessing. It's a proof you pass correctly. A scar is your passport. Let no man trouble me. For I bear. I went through it. Demons, don't you see it? Yes, we saw it in Jesus. We saw it in Paul. Mr. Man, you are packaging, but where is the scar? The symbol, the testament of a season of training. Forget about the shoes and the clothes. Every great man is not a fool. Mm. There was a day in my life, you've heard, it, you've heard me say it, when I would buy bread, 10 naira with granite inside, and then with ginger. So don't, you see, a true leader must be able to live in both the hut and the palace at the same time. Because they both represent his experience. You can't be so high that you are disconnected from the experience of the people. He said, we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched. That's the definition of compassion. The ability to be touched with the feelings of the people. Many of us right now are eyeing the throne so much you hate the cross. You hate certain things. We are so obsessed with being celebrated. We are embarrassed at the process. The greatest gift God can give you. There are people that no prophetic word can train them. Pain is the language allocated for that kind of destiny. The greatness of the destiny requires pain. It's not demonic oppression. It is the voice of God. Eloi, Eloi, why have you forsaken me? That star. And so today he looks at it and begins to make intercession for the saints. I was on earth. I know what it feels like to be rejected. So when he sees a man of God crying while people are doing, oh God, punish him. This preacher does not like us. The advocate now speaks. He said, I was there. My pain, my star reminds me. You can't have compassion without a scar. It's not about being good or bad. Your scar is what connects you. Not to the past, to the people. Is God speaking to us? Very simple message this morning. I have seen people who are embarrassed. When church is over and they are about to trek home. You see the ashamedness. They are ashamed. They try to hide. I'm smuggled. Look, go through this process with pride and dignity. That I have only one shed does not take away the anointing. Don't be embarrassed. No, sir. We live in a world where we 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 treat people as though because you have not entered it today, the world is not working. No, sir. I have never been ashamed of my pain. I've never been ashamed of the process. I will go. There are times you will cry. There are times you will receive the last alert you had. And God will ask you to sow. You will think the miracles will come every day. 
there were times when by faith I prayed and believed that I had a lot in the bank. I got up and trekked and joined the queue for hours. When it was my turn, then they didn't do all this ATM that they do now. When it was my turn, they said, are you expecting money? I said, yes. They said, there's no money. That's how I trekked back. Lord, you are still faithful. You see, there are times you lay hands on every sick body that can be laid. Nobody gets killed. You see, your ego becomes so strong, it no longer becomes about you. That's when the power starts flowing. When you are no longer embarrassed about the testimony, whether or not it happens now. I came to share with you something that I believe your pastor would like you to hear this morning. There is a scar behind every glory. There is a scar. Just ask them to roll that cloth of honor and you will see scars that represent the mockery of men. Scars that represent naysayers. You are not the first and there's nothing special about it. That you pray and fast and finish your prayer and finish your fasting and God acts as if it was not him you were talking to. Then you look at someone else. And you see, we have to be careful because some of us fall victim. Listen carefully. We fall victim. And, and, and please let me encourage us men of God. Don't hide the true stories from the people. Don't make it look like you jump overnight. No, let them know you cried. Let them know you failed. There is a relationship between the cross and the throne. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever trust you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow. Oh God, you are my God. I may cry, but I will follow. And I will ever praise you. God is showing you a vision and in the physical after one year there are still five members don't be in a rush there is something he's achieving those people are not your members they are your leaders the members are yet to come they will always come when the leaders are trained we allow men and they are scorning at us. People have borrowed money to buy vehicles. To enter seasons that the favor of God would have brought. There is something called an appointed time. A Kairos moment. Where heaven coordinates itself. And God demonstrates to men that you pass the test. They are young ministers moving around, struggling at embassies like arm robbers because they want to just go to any country to prove that there is an international ministry. Do you not know that a thousand cubits is measured and God watches your faithfulness? Hmm. I came to bless you this morning. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh, oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow. I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your way. And I will follow you all of my days. That's how he leads. Step by step, you are leading me. And I will follow you all of my days. What part of the training are you about to run away from? Because you need to prove a point. You need to let men know you are a prophet. What part of the training are you running away from? You need to let people know that the anointing for wealth is upon you. What part of the training are you running away from? Listen, there is power in preparation. 
It's amazing how you can raise others and God will ask them to go and ask you to wait. And you are saying, Lord, I don't understand. Why keep embarrassing me? You think because you are marking time, you are not moving. You wait when he's done with you. Then he will present you as a trophy. Twelve years, Joseph, a woman lied that he raped her. Look at that kind of scandal. And Joseph went to the prison and was still happy. He had the gods and the effrontery to still represent God in the prison. Do you know if Pharaoh, Potiphar, forgave him, he would have just been a nice servant. That unforgiveness was necessary. That unforgiveness was a blessing. He had to be scandalized to get to the throne. Be careful who interprets to you what is happening in your life. Because God can be moving you forward and someone can pity you so much and interrupt what God is doing. Abraham, take your son. You would have said, Abraham, no, 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 no. Sometimes, don't be too kind over people as to interrupt what God is doing. If he is not coming to the rescue, step back too. You may think you are doing kindness and you can destroy seasons in their lives. I have seen very kind people in my life, Pastor. I've seen people who love God so much. I've seen them go through certain seasons and I have the means and the influence to help them. I have been surprised at the restraint God has brought. It's painful watching someone you call kind. You are the one calling him kind. It's God that knows that heart. Everybody looks kind in the cave. Allow the glory manifest and you see the heart of man that it is desperately wicked. So while the man is praying and say, Lord, increase my church, you are even tempted to say, look, can I go and endorse you? And God says, don't do that. Allow him. And you are, Lord, but I, as this man is, is the kindest man that I know in my life. Let the process be complete. And you will see that God will put something upon his life. That regardless of the rising, he will stay. This is why men don't last. They don't last because they jump classes. They jump lectures. And in the realm of the spirit, every lecture is important. You miss it one day, you will see what you missed haunt you in the future. When you are ready to go, walk with God, he doesn't continue from where you started. He takes you back. It's his pattern. doesn't matter whether you've been 20 years doing your thing. You come back. I look across this auditorium and I see a people who are being prepared. And if we are not guided to see the things happening in our lives, you can be frustrated. Are we together now? Hmm. That you have not held a tangible result does not mean the word of God is not working. There is something that is happening. Are we together now? Hmm. Let the disappointment happen. There are some prayers that God will not answer. Let me just tell you up front. Oh Lord, silence them. You would think God will answer it. But you will be surprised. Because it coordinates your focus. It keeps you focused. Money can destroy. Don't trivialize it. Don't just say, God, give me money and I will serve you. When he has not vetted you, it's not my God. It's not the God I know. With all David's training, pastor, a time came when kings go for war and he chose not to go. And he stood and he looked at a woman. And he said, this is someone's wife. I have the power to get and marry whoever I want. And he said, go and get me that woman. If you saw that young boy in the wilderness, you would not believe he would have the effrontery to do such a thing. That he wrote a man's own death sentence. Just like you who is looking at me now. You don't know what you can do. Let me tell you. Only God accredits men. It is deceptive to believe you are okay based on how kind you think you are. You must pass through that furnace and be tried as gold. And God allocates a portion for you in this kingdom that is incontestable. Everyone will know this is Rehoboth. God has given you your own space. Everybody say preparation. Say I receive grace to prepare.
sometimes we rush things too much and we believe that by rushing we are creating an impression to people around us that we are making progress you know patience is a very scarce virtue in our generation right now patience we are the ones who are rich why because i'm wearing a shoe of two million i'm wearing a shirt and someone who god is training who is two, the real millionaire is there he doesn't even have ten thousand and he feels so guilty for working with god he feels so guilty for obeying god he feels so guilty for not being fake look how guilty we feel for working at god's pace in our lives i came to challenge you take away the shame there's nothing to be ashamed of if what you have after this service is gary in your house and a friend says i'm coming to visit you don't start saying look um the person that you are going to see in my house is not really my father my, my real father is in germany somewhere you know condition what all those things jesus the bible did not hide the fact that his father was a carpenter you see that and of course carpentry in those days was not a small thing but in in any case the Bible does not hide the details of Jesus' simple life. Because of this attitude, there are many of us who will see our mothers. They didn't go to school, they can't talk, and we say, no, it's, it's not my mother. It's, it, this is a complicated story. I'll talk about it one day. We are not proud of it. You beg your friend, can I use your house? I have some visitors to see. No. Anybody who does not have the discernment to see where God is taking you should not be on that road with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's brooding over all your darkness. He is causing light to shine from dark. You are brooding over all my darkness. You are causing light to shine. I will never go where God has not taken me. Even in ministry today, I know the limit of both the grace and the sphere of influence. And I will never allow the accolades of men push me out of seasons. I know what he's doing and I will stay. It may cost me reputation, it may sting my ego, but I rather stay with him. He said, We will not live here if your presence, that symbol, that that charisma of authenticity, if you will not go with us, then I will not go. Be careful as you activate seasons prematurely in your life. Be careful. Not every open door was opened by God. The will of man can open doors. Are we together? Genesis 11. The will of man can open doors. And God will have respect for it. But happy are those who are ready to endure. And say, Lord, I will endure. I know. You have called me into the ministry of kingdom, wealth and prosperity. And your trouser is 500 naira. And said, it's not befitting for this status. No. Just stay with him. And let him walk upon you. And when he lifts you, everyone who sees you will say to God be the glory. This is a wonder. Be careful as you rate people based on what you see. Be careful as you stratify people based on your limited vision of the dealings of God in their lives. You can raise this one and say, This is an ordinary pastor, this is an ordinary businessman, this is an ordinary brother. Oh, this, oh, you are a student in Footmina. We are talking about people who are graduates here. This is a this. Now, for his brooding over every darkness, he is causing his light to shine from dark. Lord, you are brooding over all my darkness. You are causing light. I remember years ago, uh, maybe two, three years, I don't know which of the cities now, by Elsa or somewhere, there were a group of young men loved God and they listened to my messages and they just challenged themselves that we're going to bring apostles. And I think they got in touch with the protocol 
or so. I can't remember the story. And the protocol lovingly told them, said, just take it easy. Don't worry. One day God will grant you grace. You will invite apostle. Just find an anointed man within your area. And I remember one of them sending me text messages. Says, this is how Jesus was. You know, this and that and that. We are trying to ask you to come and you are not coming. You are doing all these big men. Apostle, we respect you. And I said, look, this text is a sign that he has not finished his training. And they will not keep quiet and learn. You see that? These guys want to start ministry. Look at their understanding. And now, very soon, he's going to call himself a father. And he will call every other person in his church a son. Imagine the kind of products that will come out. And they will say it's the will of God. There is power in preparation. There are men of God who know nothing about ministry ethics. There are men of God who know nothing about the disciplines of ministry. They are anointed, but that's not enough for ministry. The moment you get the part you want, you can exit. Or you can stay and say, Holy Spirit, although I have had this, I'm still willing to stay. Is God speaking to us? There are men of God who have been invited to churches once and they will never be invited again because they did not behave themselves wisely. They sat in the presence of their destiny helpers and messed up the opportunity. There are gospel artists who were invited. They thought it was all about the voice. And they did a lot of foolish things. The greatest unbecoming of a man is to shut your door by yourself because of lack of preparation. You see, let me tell you, the table of greatness only allows people once per season. Whenever you come, it's like a defense. When you miss it, it's like the hand of a clock. It will come back, but you have to allow it to turn as slow until it reaches you again. So, the goal is to know that time and chance happens to all. So, your time will come. Rather than sitting down and mesmerizing on the time, keep preparing. So that when I appear before Pharaoh, I never go back to the prison again. The goal is not to look forward to Pharaoh. The goal is to look forward to what you will do that will keep you there. Is God blessing us this morning? God is shaking us a little. My dear sisters, my dear lovely sisters, our generation has a lot of pressure on our sisters to do and be so many things. And there's pressure. Pressure is pushing a lot of people to exit useful seasons in their lives. I bring you a word of hope. You have already been implicated. You've gone too far to fail. Just be patient. Don't start using your result at this level as the ultimate basis of vetting your progress. You may be wrong. Allow that tree to grow. It is budding. Be patient. The fruit will come. And you will see that the birds of the air will come and nest. And you, you will become a city, not just an individual. That's how it works. I've had the privilege to know a lot of people before they are lifting and they are rising. And my goodness, these men and women were testaments of intense sacrifice. There is nothing I hear about them today that will surprise me. Because I bear witness. Can there be a testifier that you deserve the crown on your head? You can't be great without a witness. No one saw you on the road. Jesus had witnesses that saw him carrying the cross. Can there be a witness that says, Pastor, you deserve the increase, the crowd, the prosperity. I knew when you cried without results. I knew when you were patient. I knew when you were the one paying the transport of members. I knew when you were making intercessory prayers, not for yourself. All the days of my appointed time, my appointed time, my appointed time, I will wait. I'm so glad for the way the Lord taught me today. Otherwise, I'm sure the little increase and the little growth would have shredded me to pieces. I would have become Ichabod. I am grateful. You will be surprised at the things that keep me today. Much more than the books I read are the pains and the testimonies of the cave of Adullam. I remember. When I see somebody who has never risen, I know because I've been there. I understand how that tear feels. House on the Rock is quiet. God is speaking. Yes, sir. 
I believe in excellence. Your pastor believes in excellence. It's the core value of this ministry. But be careful. We've gotten into debt to buy things. To activate or seasons in our lives. Whereas we can... Why fake what can be real? Why fake what can be real? There are people who eat in restaurants. They have no business going there. There are people who do a lot of things. Please take serious what I'm saying. It will give your life focus. And it will give you joy. Say so after me the power of preparation. Please sit down. Just give me a few minutes. And we're done. It pays to be prepared. It doesn't just pay to seek manifestation. To seek to be at the spotlight. It pays to prepare. No matter what kind of door stands before me opened, I will ask the Lord, is this the season to step into this door? Years ago, I had lots of opportunities in ministry and other things because of what people saw and the grace they discerned. But the Lord prohibited me at the strongest times. I remember the first time we had our crusade, the PFN called me and said they wanted me to come and open a branch of our ministry there, that they were going to supply pastors. Everyone say breakthrough. Who will not want that kind of result? But I told them, I said, please, I honor you people, but let me... They were going to give me a free auditorium and free like a pastoral team. And I went and the Lord spoke something that is very strange. He said, you do that, you will die. And that's exactly what I told the PFN chairman. I said, the Lord said, if I did that, I would die. Knowing what I know now, you can't imagine the level of foolishness that was at work in me. If I dare flattered myself that I would be able to open branches and manage them, I would have been Ichabod. I thank God for the discipline to remain. Every man seems right in his own eyes. It's amazing how we set the exams for ourselves and mark the scripts and organize an award ceremony and give ourselves the award and we believe we are fit. You must receive the grace to stay. No matter how hard the fire is stay. When you throw a paper in fire, in five minutes it's over. But when you put gold in fire, it stays. It stays. Three things very quickly. While you are in your season of preparation. Number one. Go for knowledge. The season of preparation is a season... Where you can make mistakes and go scot-free. Let me give you an advice. Mistakes have a validity period. It's true. We are all humans. It's true. But you see, as you rise in life and in ministry, there is a, an expectation. There are silly things today that would not have mattered, but today because of the office you occupy. If you see pastor doing something as little as taking sugar cane on the street it's not supposed to be your business it's his private life but just because of the position he's now occupied it will become a case for discussion you may see it in a newspaper how are we sure this is ordinary sugar cane people read meaning he just decided to have fun with himself on the road think how sensitive greatness is that something that should not be a bother is because it happened to you Is God speaking to us? You need to go for information. You need to go for knowledge. Buy the truth. Sell it not. It didn't say buy it with money. Buy it with humility. Humility is currency. It can buy things. Buy it with integrity. Buy it with relationships. Buy the truth. You must understand how things work. In ministry, in your industry, in your career. You must pay the price. The reason God does not expose you is so that if you make mistakes, you can have the fortitude to return back. When you make mistakes on stage, sometimes the, 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 loss, the loss is irrecoverable. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me, for me, in all the earth. That would have been wise enough, but he broke it into seasons. You will start from Jerusalem. 
When you finish Jerusalem, you will move to Judea, then to Samaria, then to the utmost part. I thought he just said the same thing. Why didn't you just say the utmost part? But he said, no, if it is God, you always start from Jerusalem. No matter how anointed you are, Jerusalem first, then Judea. The mistake that you made in Jerusalem and went away with it will not be tolerated in Judea. The mistake you made in Judea will not be tolerated in Samaria. It is true. A minister coughs on stage and sometimes almost has to apologize to the whole world. What is there about coughing? Is he not a human being? That is the expectation when you get to certain levels. Think about that. Lord, give me 50 members and God says, no problem. Give me 5,000. God says, no problem. Just calm down first. Let me work on your finances. The day one department made of 150 people visit your house, that's when you will say, God, you would have waited for me to rise first. Because they will interpret your not understanding finances as greed. They expect that the same anointing that brought them should have made provision for their coming. You see, when God lifts you, there are auxiliary implications of your lifting. And if it is God that is lifting you, He supports the system. Is that true? Yes. If I go to pastor's house now, and I'm served a wonderful meal, I will say thank you out of honor but i will not be surprised because a man at this level should a pastor looks at me and says um apostle don't never mind honestly there really is nothing in this house i will say let's pray i will say let's pray for someone else but i will say let's pray because it means something is wrong you see that so as god lifts you he begins to make the provisions for that level of lifting there are people who want a contract, pastor, of one billion. And God is saying, just walk, let me prepare you. And they are saying, no. Do you know that sometimes a contract of one billion will require you investing hundred million before you get the one billion? And just when God has opened the door of the favor, bring the hundred million and say, well, uh, I don't exactly. And say, please. Greatness has an ID card. Those who are there know what they got to pass there. When they look at you, that's why certain people don't help you beyond certain levels. They don't hate you. They can see it. And they know you should not be there. And if for any reason you smuggled yourself there, life has a way, a very embarrassing way of fishing you out. And life will look for your group and keep you there. Even outside of your own will. Which is better. Here's how the Bible put it. When you enter an assembly, say sit at the back. It's a principle. It didn't mean literally sit at the back. Sit at the back. Something upon you will take you from there and put you in the right seat. But when you come and choose for yourself, I think I should be here. Then Anosha says, no, no. Based on the system we have seen, I think there is somewhere... Everybody say knowledge. Something you do not know is the reason why your season of preparation has not finished. Something you are not learning and learning fast is the reason why certain doors have refused to open regardless of your prayer. Go for knowledge. Hear what I'm saying. Go for knowledge. Your core skill may have been learned, but the auxiliary support knowledge has not been there. That means I can be a preacher that I'm preaching, I'm anointing. So you know that if you invite me, the sick will be healed. But that's not all there is to ministry. So God keeps you, although you believe you are prepared, until the auxiliary support structures like honor, you see that, like ethics, like all other things are there, then now you are ready for that rising. Everybody say knowledge. Please say it, knowledge. It's very important, knowledge. The reason why God gives us an opportunity to prepare is so that we can search for knowledge. Pant after knowledge. Useful information. 
Questions are the seeds for answers. Don't keep quiet. When you step into the presence of an uncommon mentor, don't act like a colleague. Ask questions. And then keep quiet with all humility. Don't say we the colleagues. You don't have the results. So ask questions. There are people when I sit under, I'm like a sponge. And I'm quiet. And gleaning from the dimension of wisdom that God has poured into them. Everybody cannot be your colleague. It's flattery. Is that true? I know you are good. That's why I brought you thus far. But hasten your season of preparation by going for the required knowledge. Do you know how to behave when you stand before Pharaoh? Have you been taught Pharaoh does not like beard? Or you, will you just carry your regalia? The Bible says when the king sent for Joseph, they had to change his apparel. There is a protocol for every system. Have you been taught? Have you paid attention to learn? Is God speaking to us? Everybody say knowledge. Say information. You must go for it. You must go for it. One time, one, one dear man of God called me and he said, Apostle, I can't understand. My members are not appreciative. They are so not grateful. I do everything for them. I preach. I pour my life. And while he was talking, I was just calm. Because like a doctor, instantly I knew where he was in ministry. There is a level in ministry where that thing you, you cry for or you cry against will be your feedback system. The guy was, he, truly he felt so ungrateful. He was sad. Why would they do this to me? I mean, is God not watching? Apostle, it's not like I'm looking for money from them. But nobody shows, nobody cares, nobody does anything. And I just looked at him. I said, I understand, man of God. Just take it easy. God is faithful. You see? I'm the one doing everything and all of that. I can tell you in the next three or five years, you will see that man jumping in that same church with the same members. He has disregarded their attitudes. He has known that that's why I'm really sent to them. If I, I will keep seeing episode of, episodes of annoying scenes. So I have decided to carve my joy independent of their behavior. That's growth. He now listened to another senior man of God who may tell him a story that happened somewhere and say, look, members are wonderful people, but they are humans. If you expect them to be the babies of your joy, get ready to cry. So you see the man rejoicing, regardless of who disappoints him. And he said, Pastor, it's like breakthrough has been coming every day. He said, no, I just grew wiser. Billy Graham's wife at the beginning of the ministry, she confessed that she... She contemplated suicide many times because the husband would not be there with her. They said, did you think he would divorce? He said, no, no, not divorce. But suicide, yes, many times. That she would cry many times until she, she interacted with other women of God. And she saw the way they were happy. And she asked them, is it that your husbands are always around? They said, no, we got used to it. And we found a way of making ourselves happy. And she said, so this thing is not only me. When you see someone laughing, the same storm you are in is the same storm, but there was an information in his heart. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So what made you cry yesterday? People will think you've gotten the breakthrough. You've not. You've just learned how to be happy. Hmm. There's a joy in my soul. In spite of all the sadness that surrounds me And the joy that I have Only comes alive every time I hear your voice Listen, truly let me tell you people of God I live a very peaceful life Don't think it's everyone who sends me text messages saying Apostle you're a wonderful person there are people who call me and say, Apostle, I used to know you. You were a humble person. Now you are proud. I've been ringing your phone. You are not. I don't even know who they are. I don't have their numbers. It's not my fault. You refuse to follow me. It's not pride. You know, people are funny how they don't have respect for your life and your time. They just believe I used to know you. You should pick whereas you are preaching. 
if you do, if you are not trained, you will become angry for nothing and say, Why is it that my loved ones don't like me? Ah! They just look at you and they say you are arrogant. People can insult you and say, My sister, you used to be humble, but just because you are married now, you are behaving like this. It's all right. It's your opinion, but God bless you. We think about it. And you just leave them and don't even pray about it. And you are laughing. And the devil says, how else do I get you? I say, it's too late. I was trained. I was trained. Number two, let's hurry up. A few minutes we have this morning. Mm. Information. The second thing you need to do while you are in your season of preparation is to contend for genuine empowerment contend for genuine empowerment everything done in the kingdom is done from the standpoint of the anointing you don't ignore it and rise no sir there is a language only the anointing can speak there is a language only the anointing can speak. It's true. Contend for it. Contend for it. Contend for it. Ask questions. Ask questions. Lord, what happens when a madman comes to my congregation? Ask God. Otherwise, you'll be forced to ask your members on that day. Ask God. Let him quietly answer you. What happens? Lord, what happens when the bills rise? And it looks like there is nothing in the account. Have you kept supplies for me in the spirit? Is there a way I access it? Ask questions. What happens to God when I have an idea that the gates of hell are rising up against me? Is there a provision for my safety? Ask questions. Contend for empowerment. He said, tarry ye in Jerusalem. Tarry ye in Jerusalem. Tarry ye. I've given you information. But you run around like that, you will die in a few days. Tarry ye. There is still a factor that must come upon you. It is information plus empowerment that produces greatness. Not information alone. When you are empowered without information, your impact will be small. Because your knowledge expands. It gives room for the anointing. Luke 24 verse 49. Tarry ye in Jerusalem. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10. Very popular scripture. It says if the axe head is blunt. Remember? That when the axe head is blunt. There will be much energy. Much energy. I heard this years ago pastor. That if you have 8 days to cut a tree. Use 7 days sharpening the knife. 7 days sharpening the knife. And you hit that tree once. And it's gone. You can start cutting the tree with a blunt axe from day one. And even if two more weeks were added, you would not make any progress. Please, I bring us a serious word from the Lord. If you want to be great, you must receive grace. Some of you right now, what you need to buy is not a shoe. Not a designer. You need to buy tapes and books. You need to buy a laptop. Buy a phone. Not for the purpose of doing whatever we do. Just go and remain there. Remain in your one room. It's not time to move out of it yet. You are not ready for it. You too, you know that you are not ready. Don't be ashamed and say, I'm too old for it. No. If your mind had developed, it would have pushed you out of that room. The fact that you are still there, remain there, is a testament. You stay there and build your spirit. Acquire the requisite knowledge. And all of a sudden, you will see yourself rise. You have the knowledge, stability. It gives you stability of life. No matter the fiery darts of Satan, the knowledge of God has become a shield and a defense for you. Your pastor is where he is today. And we are celebrating him. If we ask him to come and receive the mic... And to share some of his challenges as a family man, as a man of God, many of us may end up crying here. You know about his background and the pressure he had to push through even in becoming a Christian and a child of God. All of those are testaments. Are you only writing your success stories and ignoring your pain? Go back and write the pain too. You will need it. Your story will be boring if it's just success, success. People need to know the truth. Tell them I cried. Tell them there was a day I thought God did not answer me. 
For we're standing here only because you made a way, made a way. When my back was against the wall and it looked to see if it was over, you made a way. So I'm standing here only because you move your mountains up. And with His power, you perform miracles. Lord, there is nothing that's impossible. So we're standing here only because some mountains remaining in your life are not signs that you cannot move them. They are signs that you need them. The mountains keep you focused. Goliath was needed for David to be lifted. He just told Mary, you are highly favored. And all of a sudden, Mary gets into trouble. Do you know the challenge for a woman to carry pregnancy and they tell you that it was a spirit that gave it to you? No way. Those guys were not going to hear that news. Which rabbi? Just confess. Which of them? And then the painful part is the Bible says Mary kept these things to herself. That means she kept quiet. Even, do you know what it takes to keep quiet when you have an answer? You must be trained by God. There's always pressure to speak in defense of yourself. But part of the training you will learn that not all words are not the only answers all the time. There are times you have what to say but your silence is a greater answer. This woman was caught in adultery in the very act of it. Jesus was, ah, that's a simple, I know where you are quoting. That's what Joshua Selman would do. I said, don't joke with me, I can quote this scripture. And we make a fool out of ourselves. And Jesus kept quiet. Silence is not weakness. He was writing. They would be smiling and say, we've gotten him. I told you guys, this man will walk. And all of a sudden, from that silence, wisdom came. And he spoke just one sentence. And they were convicted from the oldest. Do you know why it was from the oldest? If the youngest was convicted, the oldest would say, I'm, I'm here and you are. That level of wisdom started from the oldest. If the oldest is convicted, what, what will you do? It was not the conviction that was the issue. Who the conviction started with first? Could it be that your lack of training is the reason why you are talking too much? You think it's a personality issue. Just wait. Let God finish with you. You will find out that you don't have to be in defense of yourself or anything. This pastor is too anointed. Are you sure there is nothing? I say, look, let me tell you this. I was trained yet. No, no. When you go through that season, you will laugh at the storm. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Yes, ago, one woman um, began to advocate. I think she sent a very nasty text and said, you are, you, are, you are leaving Jesus out of the church. You are always talking about the Holy Spirit. It is Jesus we know. I grew up. I'm old enough to be your mother. It is Jesus. The Bible talks about Jesus. And then I kept quiet. I would have gone there and said, Madam, you are not the one who called me. You did anoint me. You are, not, you are not a partner in this ministry. Keep quiet. You see, that is an answer. But it's an answer from an altar where there's no training. When you have been trained, you know that your silence is also a message. Everybody say knowledge. Say, I will go for knowledge. Everybody say empowerment. Say, I receive grace for empowerment. Listen, listen, listen. If you believe what I am teaching you, Greatness will appear and manifest in a way that you will be surprised. The power of preparation. Never admire a man's result when you are unwilling to understand the pain requirement. Are we together? Yes. Nobody, nobody I know 
inherited greatness. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. It takes pain. So don't see your pain as unusual. You are writing a story. At the end of it, your story will be admirable. You will know that you have conquered this truth. Did God speak to someone this morning? That what you are going through, just because it looks negative, does not mean it is negative. God is going somewhere with you. Say, God is going somewhere with me. Prophesy to yourself, God is going somewhere with me. I may not look like it, but I'm getting there. And He will take me by His hand. It is true. We are going to pray shortly. But I leave you with this. We we'll have the time to pray and minister in the evening. I just, this burned so strong in my spirit to communicate with you. On this pastor's appreciation, I truly believe with all my heart that this is what your pastor would want you to hear. To know that it is not unusual. When you find yourself in a scenario where it looks like all doors have been closed. The Bible says, for we know. They may not know, but we know that all things. Everybody say all things. For we know. Provided you know, that's alright. Whoever else does not know is okay. You don't have to be under pressure. So brothers and sisters, after this service, if there is no transport for you to go home, pray in tongues with joy while you sing on your way. And they look at you and say, brother, I saw a photo of you on one black car. I thought it was your car. He said, no, no, no. Mine is yet to come. And I just says, look at this guy disgracing me. No, no. Don't be ashamed of your scar. Don't have to fake it. Don't stand near a car and snap and say the Lord's faithfulness. It's a lie. When God is faithful, the faithfulness is evident. Take your touchlight phone and be proud of it. You are not a thief. It's with honor. You got a job as a teacher in one small school. If no one is in doubt that you are a graduate, be proud of it. Don't be ashamed of seasons. It is while you are teaching one of your little pupils that your destiny helper will come. God will make sure your destiny helper's child is in that school. And from there you will rise. This morning's message is a call to not be ashamed of your season of training. And to not prematurely open yourself into seasons that have not been anointed. There is power in preparation. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I will wait. Are you ready to pray? We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome into my life to continue the training process. Fill this temple with your presence. It's a very powerful prayer. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Yeah. Fill this temple with your presence. Lord, I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Speak it to him. Lord, I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry. I know the thoughts that you think towards me. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. To bring me a future and an expected end. I refuse to rush seasons in my life. I wait. I endure the dealing. I endure the fullness of affliction. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, grant me the grace to stay. I receive the grace to endure the mockery. Go ahead. I receive the grace. Man of God, pray. 
businessman pray. I already know the end. The end is peace. For my light affliction, which is but for a moment, for my light disappointment, for my light failure, which is but for a moment, is working in me a far more exceeding weight of glory. Hallelujah. Are we praying? The second prayer point this morning is to cry for the grace to wait till the process is over. Are we together? He could have called 10,000 angels, but Jesus stood there. It was the requisite price for that throne. We hear that you can destroy the temple and build in three days. And he kept quiet. They accused him. The fountain of wisdom was silent. Because silence sometimes is an answer. There's something you have not learned. You have, you have accelerated prematurely the season of praying. So you have missed on certain informations that are necessary for your stability. Go back. The cave of Adullam is necessary for the throne. Go back. There are monies you need to call the people and just return. And say, I borrowed five, 500,000. My intention was to move to a bigger house to prove a point. But I came for pastor's appreciation. Please just return it back. Don't worry. I'm in a house of 50,000. I've been lying to you, but I'm ready to stay here. Because when God leaves me, I'm no longer going to a rented apartment. There is something I will learn. In that period of training. Stop rushing seasons prematurely. Are we together? One last prayer point. Then I'll just speak over you and we're done. You're going to say, Lord, you see, we are humans. Let me tell you this. Anybody who knows something about increase and growth is that you remain controversial until your results bail you out. When God speaks to you, he doesn't speak to a crowd. He sends you alone. And the patterns that he gives you sometimes will be very unconventional. And at such times you will stand through intense pain. To the point that those who are close to you will not want to associate with you. Because of the, they become partakers of that stigma. So they leave you. It is at such times you need grace. We are all humans. Jesus said, Lord, if it's possible, let's negotiate this. I am God, but remember, I am man. He said, nevertheless, not my will. You are going to cry for grace. Because, you see, the scorching tongues of men can be insulting. When you share what they say about you, it's easy to act like it does not matter. But one day it will hit you where it hurts. They will say you are the eldest of five people. And four of them have moved on. And just because you claim to be a pastor, you would have made sense of your life. Look the rubbish you have made out of your life. And on that very day, you will go back to pray. You may not cry in the open, but you will kneel down. They can look at you and say, you had a chance to marry a very great man. And you went to say, you are marrying gospel, one kind of nonsense. Look what your life has become now. And for the first time, you look at your husband and admire the man you were going out with before him. We can be humans. At such point, we need a supply that is not affordable in the earth. You need something that comes from heaven. Are you ready to draw strength from heaven? See, because some of you are going through these seasons right now. While you are seated, there's a lot of pressure. All your contemporaries are built. All your contemporaries have cars. All your contemporaries have a minimum level of membership. All your contemporaries have done certain physical things. And you are about to make mistakes. You're going to say, Lord, the grace that in spite of the tears, I receive grace. I receive grace. I am human. That even when I cry, grant me grace to remain. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. It can be insulting to not command results after a certain period. But I receive grace. I receive grace. Pray. I receive grace. 
I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. Thank you for listening to this message. For further inquiries, please call 0703-082-2216 or follow us on Instagram or Twitter at HOTRMina or like us on Facebook at HOTRMina or email us at info at gmail.com. God bless you.